Hi guys, and welcome to the Navarre Beach Sea Turtle Conservation Center. My name is Alex. I am a marine biologist here at the center, and we are gonna take you guys through our center so you can learn a little bit about sea turtles, and most importantly, about our very special resident sea turtle here is Sweet Pea. So we'll talk a little bit about her and why we take care of her here at our center. So Sweet Pea is a green sea turtle. She is about nine years old, and you guys may notice she suffered some pretty serious injuries. So she is missing her front left flipper because she was severely entangled in fishing line and fishing net. You'll also notice a large portion of her shell is missing, and that's attributed to a boat strike, mainly from a prop or a propeller. Because of that injury, she is partially paralyzed on her back left flipper as well. So overall, Sweet Pea isn't a very strong swimmer anymore. So she is deemed unreleasable by the state of Florida, which makes her a full-time resident with us here at our center. So we take care of her here, make sure she's really happy, most importantly, healthy. Sweet Pea currently weighs about 39 pounds, but full grown, she'll be anywhere from 300 to 600 pounds. So she will actually get the size of that model up there on the ceiling that is the size of a full grown adult green sea turtle. And she won't reach that size till she's around 30, 35 years old. And life expectancy is anywhere from 80 to 85. Now, Sweet Pea was rescued in 2016 off of Ono Island, which is near Orange Beach, Alabama. She was found by a family that was walking on the beach at night and noticed a sea turtle in the shallow water. As they got progressively closer, they quickly realized that she had some very serious injuries and needed immediate medical attention. So she was then transported to the closest rehab center in our area, and she spent about a year and a half there recovering from her surgery and her injuries. Then in 2018, we were honored enough to be chosen for Sweet Peas Forever Home, and she's been with us ever since. So we've had the joys of sharing her story here, as well as educating the public on why sea turtles are so important and how we can help them further um, getting off of the endangerment list and getting a better population over time. So we're gonna move on to our next segment and talk a little bit more about some other species of sea turtles that we get here in Navarre Beach. All right, guys, so we're gonna learn a little bit about some other species of sea turtles that like to come and visit Navarre Beach. So first and foremost, starting with this big, big turtle right here, this is the leatherback sea turtle. This is the largest sea turtle on the planet and the deepest diving sea turtle on the planet. So this sea turtle is very unique because it has had to adapt over time to basically be really, really good in its environment, okay? So lots of things change as we go deeper in the ocean, particularly we lose a lot of light. So this turtle is colored nice and dark, almost a black tone, because that helps in its camouflage, which you guys probably know all about since that's a super great word that we learn a lot about when we talk about animals. And that's very important because that helps them escape their predators. So this particular turtle can dive down to around 3,000 feet deep, which is very deep into the ocean, but they are quite amazing animals and they get really, really big, way bigger than me. The next turtle we're gonna talk about is the green sea turtle, which is the same type of turtle or species of sea turtle that sweet pea is. So again, eventually sweet pea will get this large, almost around 300 to 600 pounds. Now, one really interesting fact about green sea turtles is even though they're called green sea turtles, they're not really colored green. They're more of a brownish color, but there is a reason why they're called green sea turtles. Green sea turtles are mostly herbivores, meaning that they eat lots of plant material from the ocean. And a lot of that plant material is green. So the inside of their body is actually colored green because they eat so much of that plant material. And that's actually where they get their name from. The next turtle we talk about is the loggerhead sea turtle. This sea turtle is very special to Navarre Beach because they are our number one nester here, which means most of the sea turtles that lay nests or eggs here are this type of turtle. So they're very special to us here and we always look out for these guys. 
Now our last turtle is our littlest turtle right down here, our littlest sea turtle, which is the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. This sea turtle is the most endangered sea turtle, which means there's not a lot of them on the planet, which is not good. So there's a lot of work and efforts being done to try to help their population get larger on the planet. They're also the most endangered because they are the only sea turtle that lays their eggs during the daytime, which is not good for them because they're easily spotted by predators. So again, there's a lot of work being done to try to help those particular species of turtles. So these are the four, what I like to call MVPs of Navarre Beach, and these are the ones that visit us the most. So we're gonna move on and learn a little bit about nesting season and our hatchlings as well. All right, guys, so really exciting right now in Navarre Beach, we are in sea turtle nesting season, and that runs from May 1st to October 31st. So what that means is we go out on the beach very early in the morning, and we are looking for sea turtle tracks, just like with this big mom sea turtle is gonna leave all on the sand. So we look for those tracks that'll eventually lead us to hopefully a nest. So once we find a nest, we'll actually rope off the nest to make sure the hatchlings are safe and they could reach a point where they will hopefully hatch. Now, when the mom sea turtle comes out of the water, she's gonna dig a really big hole into the sand. And that is anywhere from your fingertip to your elbow. In that hole or in that nest cavity, she's gonna drop anywhere from 60 to 150 eggs. So that is quite a lot of eggs but hopefully all of them will hatch. So then we have to wait 60 days, so two months, then we'll have our hatchlings hatch. So then these guys have a very, very particular way to find their way to the ocean. So hatchlings are going to follow the brightest light in the sky, which should be the moon. But when we have lots of hotels that have not friendly lighting for sea turtles, or if we have lots of people on the beach with flashlights, the hatchlings can end up getting a little confused and go the wrong way. Well, that's when we get some phone calls that'll say we found a hatchling, you know, in this hotel parking lot or over in this area, and we'll go and pick up the hatchlings and hopefully be able to release them the following day at night so they have a better chance of reaching the water. Once these little guys reach the water, they're gonna swim really, really far out to what's called the sargasm patch or the sargasm line. And they'll spend a big part of their life there growing big and strong. And then eventually when they feel ready, they'll move on to the big blue ocean on their own. And then the whole cycle will start over again. So after this, we're gonna talk a little bit about what could possibly endanger these sea turtles and how we can help them. So we're going to talk a little bit about what endangers sea turtles and how we can help them. So all of these things that you guys see behind me, these are things and objects that we actually pick up off of the beach. And a lot of this is trash or really bad plastic. So we do something here at the center where we go on the beach and do what's called beach cleanups. And we make sure that the beach looks really nice and clean, not just for the sea turtles, but also for us to enjoy. Because I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be swimming in trash either. So we try to help the sea turtles and us to enjoy the beach. Now, some of these things do hurt sea turtles. And there are things that we can do to make the environment safer for them as well. So the first big one is lowering the amount of plastic we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So plastic is found a lot in our lives. And so the less amount of plastic we can use, the better it is for the environment. Also, if you do use plastic, maybe recycling your plastic so we can turn it into really fun objects like furniture or planters or all kinds of really great things that we can reuse and repurpose on our day-to-day -day lives. The ultimate thing is we wanna try to make the ocean nice and clean because sea turtles are very curious creatures and sometimes they can end up eating some of this trash which is definitely not good for them and what we want to try to achieve is less plastic for these guys to end up getting entangled in or eating 
One of the things we also show people here at our center is how dangerous it is when we cut fishing line. So here in Navarre, we have a lot of anglers and a lot of fishermen that like to come here. And when we do fish, sometimes we accidentally hook a turtle. The biggest thing that we focus on here at our center is building a really great friendship with the fishermen and the anglers to help educate them on why it's so important to help these animals and to not cut their fishing line. So as you guys look, there's definitely something inside this turtle that doesn't belong, is that right there, that hook. So that's why we help rescue the sea turtles off of our fishing pier, and we then transport them to the sea turtle hospital. That way they can be seen by a veterinarian that can take care of them, and then we can hopefully release them back into the ocean. All right. With that being said, you guys learned a little bit about what they're not supposed to eat. How about we learn a little bit about something the sea turtles really do like to eat and it's very good for them. All right, so we learned a little bit about sweet pea. We learned about different types of sea turtles. We learned about nesting season, hatchlings. We learned about marine debris and pollution. How about we learn some really fun facts about sea turtles? So sea turtles have a favorite snack and every type or species of sea turtle loves to eat jellyfish. So this is a big reason why sea turtles are so important for the marine ecosystem. So they eat so many jellyfish, it helps balance the jellyfish population on the planet. So if we lose sea turtles as a species, then we will get a huge increase of jellyfish on the planet, which will unbalance the ecosystem and actually could potentially make the planet very sick. Just like for us, if we eat too much Halloween candy in one night, we also get very sick. If we have too many of one type of animal on the planet, it can make the environment very sick as well. So jellyfish are some of the oldest animals on the planet and have been around for millions of years. But what's really unique about them is they don't have a brain or eyes or even a heart, but they're still around and they've again been around for a very long time. So we like to learn as much as we can from them in the science field because that could tell us a lot about the environment as well. But I think the coolest fact is that sea turtles love to eat them and it's their favorite snack. All right, guys, so before we leave, we wanna tell you guys how you yourself can become a sea turtle hero. And there's six easy ways to do that. So the first one is picking up our trash, making sure we don't leave any trash or marine debris on the beach. The second one is leave it flat. So if you guys go to the beach and you love to build sandcastles, make sure we're knocking those sandcastles over because that can be a really big obstacle for a sea turtle and we want their nesting season to be as smooth and as easy as possible. Our third one is lights out. So during sea turtle nesting season, we want to make sure that the beach is as dark as possible. That makes the mom sea turtle feel, feel very safe and safe enough that she'll lay her eggs. So we definitely need that. Our fourth one is leave no trace. Again, making sure we don't leave any beach toys or beach furniture behind or while we're staying on the beach. Again, that could be a really big obstacle for our turtles. Next, we have do not disturb, which means basically we want to leave the sea turtles alone. If they're nesting or if the hatchlings are hatching, we can always watch them, but keeping a really good distance. That way they have their space. And last but not least, telling others. So now that you guys have learned all about sea turtles here at our center, go out there and talk to lots of other people about what you learn. And that's how all of us can actually give sea turtles more tomorrows and hopefully become even more uh, populated on the earth.